Hi guys, this is going to be a how-to video to teach you how to make your own t-shirt rug in the round. I wish I could say that this is a, a pattern that you can use and it's going to work perfectly. Um, there's a reason why you can't really find those around on the internet because there really isn't any. I was looking around for a while trying to find one. Um, I ran into a lady who was making rugs like this and selling them and she told me that what she did was she would do, she's working with single crochets, she would do two rows of single crochets in every third row she would do an increase every third stitch. So she would do one single crochet, one single crochet, and then an increase. One single crochet, one single crochet, and then an increase. And she would do this every third round. Well, I started to do that, even using the same yarn that she did. This is where she recommended me to go and buy. And it just, it didn't work out. So I quickly realized that depending on the yarn or how you crochet, um, you're just going to have to make adjustments as you go. Now, there's many kinds of t-shirt yarn that you can get. This one is four and a half centimeters wide or 1.78 inches wide. Um, but there's lots of t-shirt yarn out there. I recommend that you get the same company because you have more likely that it will be cut the same. This in, in the same thickness, which will help you be able to do the pattern and kind of know what you're getting yourself into because it's not going to like go really thin and really thick. So all of it should look the same. Um, one of the misconceptions I had when I, when I d decided I wanted to make a t-shirt rug is, wow, the yarn is so big and you use such a big hook and it's going to be done so fast. Well, I learned really quickly that that was not the case. <laughs> Uh, working with this big yarn it does make you feel like you're you're you know doing it much faster, but it is so much more physically draining to use this yarn. I mean, I could I could only do like a few rows before I just felt like my arm was going to fall off. Now I do have a uh, carpal tunnel, so I do. I mean, it's not full fledged carpal tunnel, but I do have problems where I cannot just keep uh, crocheting all the time, even with the regular yarn. But this stuff is. Oh my God, this was so much worse. Um, I can only do like a few rows a day and sometimes I'd have to switch a day because I would still feel the tiredness from the next day. So don't think that you're gonna get this yarn and you're gonna be able to make a, a rug in a day because that is just not gonna be the case. So when you get this, you're gonna you know, keep in, in mind, you're gonna have to work on it a little bit every day. Um, the the uh, hook that was recommended for this yarn is 11.5 millimeter or in the US a size P. But if you have a thinner thinner uh, kind of t-shirt yarn, maybe you need a smaller hook. So definitely find out what's recommended for the size t-shirt yarn that you're using. Uh, I use three different colors. I used, uh, this is the third color here. And I used only like one skein for here, one skein for this, and then by the third, I got, I think I got one skein, uh, one whole one of these, and then after that it took two to do the last three rows, which are, let me see, show you here, here. So once I made it back to this original color again, I was using two skeins. So you, depending on how big you want to make it, just keep that in mind, as it gets bigger and bigger, you're going to... Uh, for the same area, you're going to be needing like double the skeins. Um, let's see, the other thing, let me see. Oh, the finished rug that I have here, in case you're interested, is 93 centimeters or 36 and a half inches. And that's measured this way or this way from the middle point. Okay, so, um, like I said, it's, uh, it's not something that you can actually say this is the pattern and that's it. I told you what the lady had said to me and it didn't work out for me. So what I recommend, I do have a pattern that you can kind of follow on my site. You can find the link down below, 
but these are the things you need to look out for. One is if your rug is starting to curl up at, at the end like this, then you don't have enough yarn. So you probably next round, you want to do an increase round, which is I would do one, two single crochets in a row, and then I would do a single crochet increase. And the other thing you want to wa watch out for is if you get like a bit of buckling like this that can take place in the rug. That means you don't have enough yarn and about time it shows like this on this heavy rug uh, where it's very noticeable it means that you probably are going to have to back out and oh my god considering that this is so hard to work with I know it's going to be difficult <laughs> to, to want to have to rip it out but if you want it to be flat you're going to have to rip it out I would recommend at least two rows and then do the increase on that row so you would want to rip out one two rows and then make this row here an increase row and then continue on. So keep those things in mind because given that there isn't any exact pattern that I can give you because you may be using a different hook size, you may crochet tighter or looser, um, your size of your yarn, t-shirt yarn may be different because there's so many different sizes of cut thickness of the t-shirt yarn. Go by those methods that I just told you when it buckles or when it curls and just take one step at a time. Remember that you have the weight of this yarn on your side so make sure that you always lay it down on the ground to see if it has any buckling before um, you decide that you need to rip it out because sometimes the weight when you actually put it on the ground uh, the buckling won't really be so bad and when I say buckling I mean the like this kind of thing. It may kind of like relax enough from the weight that it's not that big a deal so you may not have to just go and rip it out so be sure now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to get started on one of these uh, rugs which can be the most difficult part and then the rest you just have to follow what I just said before like I said you can go on my site there is a pattern but like I said you're still going to have to take each row and make sure that it's not curling or buckling so let me go ahead and grab the yarn and show you how to get started on one of these. Okay, first off, you're gonna make your slip knot as usual. And you wanna chain two. It's hard to hold the yarn <laughs> the way you normally would. So one and two. And then this first chain of the two you're going to be working six single crochets. So go into that first chain and make sure that you keep your stitches kind of loose. Don't uh, make it so tight because it will also affect your buckling of your rug. So just try to keep it loose. It's also going to be helpful for your arms too. So count one, two, three, four, five, four, five. So I need one more. Okay. Now for rounds one and two, I just did a single crochet in each stitch around. Later on, I kind of just went ahead and did all the way around like I would just wouldn't mark my very first stitch. There was no slip stitching in the beginning stitch. I would just work in one continuous round. But for this beginning, it's very noticeable if it's not uh, the round is not ended. So I would say at least for the center part, go ahead and slip stitch in this beginning stitch to end the round and then chain one and then go right back into that same stitch and you're going to be putting one um, no sorry you're going to be putting two single crochets in each stitch around so this very first stitch put two and then you're going to continue to work two single crochets in each stitch around so continue to do that all the way around and I'll see you when you get done. Okay, I doubled my stitches. I went from having six stitches to 12 stitches. And you're gonna wanna do this again for the next round. Again, you'll wanna slip stitch in this first 
stitch, chain one, and then within the same stitch, you're going to work two single crochets into the same stitch. And then continue to work two single crochets in each stitch around. Okay, at the end of round two, you should have 24 stitches. And to end the round again, slip stitch in that first single crochet. And I did rounds of four rows of colors. So I'm going to do one more round. For round three, you want to chain one. And then for this round, you want to put one single crochet in each stitch around. So continue to do that, and when you get to the end of this row, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to change colors. Okay, I've got one more stitch done. I mean, one more stitch that I need before I end my round. So I'm going to go ahead and go into that stitch, pull up a loop, but instead of finishing my single crochet, I'm going to go ahead and grab my next color that I need. Leave a bit of tail so that you can hide it later. I'm going to grab it. See, all I'm doing is just getting my yarn, folding it in half here to make kind of a, a loop here. And I'm going to grab it and pull it through. Sorry for the noise. Pull it through that stitch. Now you want to start working with this color. You still want to end the round. So I'm going to go into that beginning single crochet and I'm just going to slip stitch. I'm just going to slip stitch to end the round. I was trying to make my loop not be so tight. I forgot I can just pull it afterwards. Okay, so now you have your new color. So I'm going to chain one and for round four Again, I'm going to be doing one single crochet in each stitch around. So, so far I don't have any really bending or buckling. I mean, it's such a small one right now and as you add yarn to it, it's going to get heavier and heavier. So this is not what's considered a rolling yet. So just keep continuing to do one single crochet in each stitch around and I'll see you back here in a moment. Okay, now I got to the end of my row and now you can see how it's buckling. See, it's almost getting to be like it's a bowl. Now you know you definitely need to start doing some increases because that ain't gonna lay flat. Now what worked for me for the next three rounds, which would be the rest of the rounds with this color, remember I do four rounds per color, so this is one, so for the next three rounds of this color what I did is I put two single crochets in one stitch and then one single crochet in the next three stitches. That's what worked for me. Something may work different for you, but for me it was putting one single crochet in three stitches and then doing an increase. And I did that for the next three rounds. Um, but like I said, pay attention if it's buckling or if it's uh, if it's, I mean, if it's buckling or if it's curling, what you need to do. Now also, given that I'm in the same color, I just went ahead and I stopped slip stitching in this beginning stitch and I just started putting a single crochet in each and started working one continuous round, except for when I was about to end my color, I would end the row. And then, I would either uh, change colors like I showed you before, or I would just begin someplace completely different, which is something else you can do. Which means cutting your yarn after slip stitching in your last stitch, and then just attaching the yarn again by single crochet method, which I don't have another color here. Well, here, I can use this. Say if uh, you decided you wanted to slip stitch and cut your yarn and you wanted to start somewhere else, what you could do is make your slip knot and just start somewhere completely different. So say I wanted to, to start in this stitch. So you'd go in to do the single crochet method attachment, you just pull up loop and instead of you know slip stitching it like you know you've probably been taught in the past, just leave it like this and now you have two loops to do a single crochet and you just yarn over and pull through both. And then you have a 
single crochet attachment. And then you can continue, continue your pattern like that too. It's up to you how you want to make it look. So like I said, I have somewhat of a pattern if you want to continue to follow it. If this is working for you continue. and you need to try to do it the way that I did, you're more than welcome to follow the pattern. Uh, but if it's not and you need to make adjustments, please uh, go by the tips that I showed you in the beginning of this video on what to look for and how to make adjustments. And that's it. I really appreciate that you watching the video and if you did like it, please don't forget to click like. Don't forget to check out the link under the video to take you to the pattern and I'll also give you pictures and explain and everything a little better too. If you haven't subscribed or you're a first time watcher, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you can see uh, new videos every week. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching.